Welcome back to Breaking Point. I recently pitched against the Milwaukee Brewers. We have a little bit of a history last year. So I hit him with a strut and then, well, spoiler alert, you don't always win. So if you wanna see what actually happened, you're gonna to have to hit that subscribe button right now because this video is for subscribers only. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, you're gonna miss out on this content and future content. So I'll pause the video and let you do that right now. All right, as I said, I hit him with the strut and we're gonna break it down, how things were going up until that point and then how things went after that point. You know, it's spring training for everybody, still warming up, still kind of upping the level of my, uh, I don't even know what to call it, my shit talking game maybe. Anyway, uh, here's what happened. I'll play it through so you guys can see and just watch what was going on and then we'll break it down. So the first two innings, I came out of the pen in this game, actually. Kirsch went the first four and I pitched the last five. And coming out of the pen, the first two innings that I pitched, I was pretty locked in. Uh, I see a couple missed there. But other than that, felt pretty good. Ball's coming out of my hand really good. Command was really good. Stuff was sharp. Really good slider right there. Really good slurve right there. Getting a lot of bad swings, missed with the curveball right there, but overall stuff was feeling pretty good. Then, after the second inning I pitched, came back out for the third, fourth, and fifth innings I was pitching, and uh, did not feel nearly as sharp. Started spraying some stuff around, got myself into some bad counts, and paid for it. And uh, that's just baseball sometimes. So here's the moment where it shifts. Boom! Yeah. This is a good at bad. I think I got robbed. Thought that was a strike. I thought he swung on that one. And we got a homer. So let's break it down. Uh, first thing is coming out of the pen, uh, the last game I had thrown, I sprayed some stuff around in the first inning. So I was really focused on command. And uh, this is what we ended up with. Whoops, let's undo that. Wrong color, still getting going for the year. All right, so here's the first pitch of the at-bat. Get ahead, fastball down here, freeze. Normally, I like to save those for later in the account, but just trying to make sure and get ahead. Uh, I did have a bet with the pitching coach, a dinner bet, uh, if I was over 60% first pitch strikes, uh, I won. If I was under, he won, and we got pretty darn close. So that's number one, first pitch strike. Really excellent uh, cutter here. And you can see this, it's perfectly, perfectly placed right in that bottom corner. Get the swing we're looking for. This tunnels really well uh, as a fastball that's gonna end up somewhere up in this zone. And then obviously, you know, kind of you follow the ball and it breaks down into this area. So really well executed first two pitches here. Try to go up on the same line here uh, to hit that tunnel and missed a little bit, little bit too tall. I think if this ball falls the red line right here, we'd probably get a swing, uh, but obviously you can see the ball takes off up and you're just not gonna get a swing at that. However, it does set up, let's see, as this fastball follows this line like this, it does set up for the next pitch to be a breaking ball and you'll see that right here. That's the slider, that's the slurvier one and you can see it follows this, this line right here that I was trying to hit and then it ends up slower and down in the zone. Now I think if this ball ends up in this area over here, probably a swing and miss, um, it is, slower than the original uh, slider, the, the cutter that I threw that ended up down here. So the speed difference plus the additional lateral movement out here probably gets a swing and miss, but trying to throw balls uh, to the target and I actually hit my spot here, which is not super rare, but um, you don't often hit the exact spot you're going for. And I did right there, so we get the bad swing and we get the ground out. Jackie Bradley comes up. I'm a Jackie Bradley Jr. fan. I like Jack, I like his game. Um, so throw him this pitch and a little behind the scenes 
uh, info. You can see here he's pretty much right on it. Uh, gets almost full ex fully extended on it and just fouls it right back. Took a big swing. And I actually say to him, hey, you know, nice swing, Jack, on that one after the first one. So off of this, uh, off of this pitch right here, let's draw a tunnel and show you what I was trying to do. So here's where the ball starts and the ball ends up just kind of middle middle so you have this kind of look to it. Now what I was trying to do here is run some cutters and sliders into this area. Start them on the same plane and run them in off of that fastball uh, and get to the hands a little bit. I read him as being pretty much on time for this fastball. He fouled it straight back and you can see he was fully extended right there. If you look at his arms, kind of hard to see right here but his arms are pretty much fully extended over here. So that's what I read. So I decided to go in off the plate, let him pull some cutters foul and set that tunnel and preferably was going to throw a breaking ball, uh, either a slider down here or a curveball down here after the second pitch. That's how I was thinking in my head. And what we end up getting is this cutter that just ends up way up. It's a waste. Say, so, okay, I'll go right back to it. I'll get the feel for it. This cutter is way up almost in the exact same spot and I'm just frustrated. You can actually see a little bit of like this eye roll moment happening here right before the video cuts. Like, ah, frustrated with that one. So come back, figure I'll just throw a fastball freeze. You know, I've had a lot of stuff kind of starting up in this area. This is a nice fastball that comes down here. I'm thinking I'll get a freeze strike on that. And we do get a freeze, uh, but we don't hit the zone. So frustrating we started off ahead now we're back behind 3-1 and this i'm just trying to hit basically like this zone not even trying to go for the black here i'm just trying to get this ball over the plate because uh, i do not want to walk him in this situation and that's right where we get it you see it comes right in there again fully extended as he fouls this ball back um, but after two now, he's fouled two of them, you know, one here and one here. He's fouled those straight back. And I'm reading that he's just having a difficult time squaring the ball up when he sees it. So I decide I'll go right back to that spot because I just executed well. This one I get, I get by. I mean, you can see that's almost the exact same spot, maybe just slightly more away. Um, and it's just a, it's just a miss. Uh, so I think I read that at bat correctly. Um, I don't think I executed particularly well through the at bat. I executed when I needed to, uh, but could have been a lot more efficient. This one, I got all excited and I said, oh, I have a chance to throw uh, three first pitch strikes and get out to a really big lead here in the first inning and uh, just kind of yanked this ball down over through it a little bit. Not a good start. Anyway, we come back here and we get this ball just kind of middle um, and we get a foul ball. And to me, that's the pitch that kind of, I got away with that one in this at bat and it sets up everything else that I want to do. We come back and we execute. Let me go back to this fastball and show you guys something real quick. So this, I'll just draw some dots here along the way. This is the fastball trajectory coming here and it ends up middle of the zone there. So now when we go to the cutter, this next pitch, it starts a little bit above that. You can see, you know, here's the same starting point for the cutter, but it's a little bit elevated here, and then it starts breaking down and ends up right where I want it. This fastball that ends up at this height has this trajectory. So a fastball that ends up top of the zone, uh, middle, is going to look very similar to this cutter that starts here and ends up down. So I'm guessing in a 1-1 count, he probably read fastball in this location up middle right here. And that's a trigger zone, and you'll see that zone get crushed a little bit later in this video. Uh, so I'm assuming he read that, and he ends up swinging uh, at the cutter uh, to get to one, two. And once I have a fastball in, a, in account and a cutter in account, I feel super confident, especially against righties, uh, being able to put them away once I get to two strikes. And that's what we see here. Uh, throw this slider. Whoops. Go away, Siri. Sorry about that. That's actually my reminder to film this video. Imagine that. 
Anyway, back to the video. So we see this slider here. It starts off, and this is a really interesting point that I want to bring up. I'll try to draw this in a separate color that's visible. Maybe blue will work. So this slider starts off in the exact same spot. Now if you look, a couple frames, let me undo that. So it starts off right here. And if you look, it's in between, the initial flight pattern is in between this green line, which is a strike, and this red line, which is a strike. So this slider starts off in between right here. Uh, so he's read both of the red and the green lines as strikes, and he gets this slider that starts off on that blue line and ends up uh, with a lot more lateral break uh, than the cutter and a lot more depth. And we end up with this shape and you get this sword. But what's important to note here is if you look at this from the top angle, so let's draw our plate real quick. Imagine this is the plate and the mound is over here. The fastball that ended up middle probably started on this line kind of going out here and came back middle. It has a little bit of run to it. The cutter that he swung at probably started on this line and ended up over here. It has just a little bit of arm side cut to it. The slider started elevation wise, you can see over in here, it started in the middle in between these two pitches. And it probably started about here on the inside of this green cutter. But it has so much sweep that it ends up getting all the way outside the cutter and bouncing over here. So this is a really great illustration of how tunneling can work. You have three different levels. Uh, you have this fastball down, this red line right here. You have the cutter that's up here and the slider starts off right in between the two and ends up in the dirt. And over here on the right, you have the fastball that starts off kind of on the outer half and comes back middle. You have the cutter that starts off kind of middle and ends up as a strike outer half. So by the time he sees the slider, it starts off looking more middle than the cutter. And if it starts off there, it looks like a fastball middle and then it just goes and breaks wildly to the left. And that's how you get this type of swing on a ball that looks to be nowhere close. This ball bounces, uh, as you can see, this ball bounces right here. It's actually in the batter's box, um, in the lefty batter's box. You can see that right there. Well in the lefty batter's box. Here's the line of the lefty batter's box. So you can see how far it is in that, uh, in that box. So, but that's why, that's, that's, a, that's a really good execution of a tunnel and why I'll get a lot of swings on balls that look to be nowhere close if you just watch it at full speed. So that gets me out of the first inning. Here we go in the second. First pitch strike. Let me draw my strike zone here because this is another bat that has a good example. So first pitch strike down. Cutter, we try to go, try to go in. I'm trying to get this cutter in this area and I miss out over the plate a little bit but it, can, it kind of surprises him. If you look at this swing, there's a little bit of hesitation, so the foot's down, and if you watch the back kind of round right here in this frame, he's like, oh, there's that little hitch right there, the back rounds, and he's like, oh, that's a strike, and just kind of like flicks at it. Uh, not a powerful swing, got fooled, and was already behind 0-1 and just kind of took an emergency uh, hack at it. So reading that, I don't, I don't think he's reading this at bat very well at all. I know that this cutter started, let's see here, starts off up like this and ends up in this location of the zone. So it has this trajectory to it. What I'm trying to do in this next pitch is just start a ball off on that trajectory and break it down below the zone as a curveball and get a swing and miss. So we start that, we try it and miss. And I said, okay, that's just a waste pitch. If I go right back to it, I'll have the feel. This one, you can see it start, this one ends up as a strike, it's a better pitch, but you can see how high above the other trajectories it has started. So he now sees this and recognizes strike. Um, now we come back to the next pitch, because I still, spring training, I'm trying to work on some stuff, I wanted to bury it, and I actually get this ball down. Now you can see this trajectory actually looks a lot closer to the green trajectory 
um, that I drew and also the red trajectory of the cutter that I've also thrown him height-wise. Now we almost get the swing. You can see his body language here. He's triggering, he wants to, and he holds up late. It's a good take. That's actually a really good spot for my curveball. If I can get it there, I love that to lefties. I feel like I executed that one really well. So now, uh, playing with this up tunnel again, uh, we got a swing on this up cutter. We almost got a swing on this down curveball. So I try to get this up fastball. And again, we almost get that swing and he lays off. So I'm executing, except for the one curveball that I missed here, I'm executing this at bat really well and I'm reading his body language. We got buy-in on this tunnel here, no swing. We got buy-in on this tunnel, uh, no swing up here. We got buy-in on this tunnel with the cutter. We got a foul ball. So what's next? Well, he's clearly, his eyesight is clearly at this elevation. And so in a three, two count, I just stick a fastball down after he's been looking up, 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 up. And if you actually look at where this ball ends up, I mean, this is like just down middle. And you can see this pitch leave the yard later in this video as well. But after training his eyesight to be up, 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 the entire bat, boom, a down shot. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be a strike. And we get the strikeout. Next one, this is a really well executed at bat too. Like I said, the first couple innings I was executing very well. So here is our strike zone. And here is this first pitch cutter. Let's draw this right here. And then this pitch actually gets into a pretty good area for a first pitch. Now, he hits the crap out of this ball. It goes well foul, but it gives me a very good idea on where he is at. So I try to go for a curveball for a strike. I just miss. Next pitch, and get that freeze fastball down. Now, ideally, I would have liked for this fastball, I'm kind of reversing colors here, so we're gonna go with green for the fastball in this at bat. I would have liked this fastball to be right up top here uh, to play off this cutter. Unfortunately, I miss, and it just is a straight shot down. Now we get the take, and that's that kind of up, up, freeze uh, effect. Unfortunately, since I didn't land the curveball, it doesn't end the at bat, but you can still work off of it. So. We get that freeze down and in, and then we come back with the curveball and we get the check swing. Now, why did the curveball happen? Well, remember the first pitch of this at bat started on this trajectory and ended up as a strike and he hit it foul. Now he sees this curveball that starts off on a similar trajectory, right there, right there, you see this, and then this ball ends up, you know, well below the zone. He already had read that there was one strike that started on that exact trajectory and we get that swing. Now this is probably one of those ones where Pitching Ninja would uh, overlay the cutter and the curveball and show you in much better detail what that tunnel actually looks like. But for the sake of this video, you'll have to <laughs> deal with my drawings on the screen. All right, next at bat. And this one is probably the best sequence that I executed all day. We have first pitch fastball in the middle of the zone here. Again, playing my percentages, I like doing this. I don't mind squaring up the middle of the zone first pitch because if they swing, the odds are usually in my favor that it's going to be an out so long as I don't get predictable on which pitch I'm going to throw first pitch. So this is where this ball crosses the zone and I get ahead. I read that he's a little bit late to this. He's not really ready to hit. So we come back with an up cutter, a freeze, um, Let's give, let's give old Will Smith some credit. Let's watch this for a second. So I have my strikes on drawn on the screen here. It might be a little bit up. I'm not exact with it. I'm gonna clear that off. Let's just watch Will Smith's glove real quick. Check this out. So I talked about this a lot last year. Outside, if you can get your glove on, like depending on which way you wanna move the ball. If you wanna move the ball down this way, you need to get your glove on the top, outside part of it. So when you catch the ball, the ball pulls your glove in the direction that you want it to go. And what happens as he's catching this ball, he beats it to the spot. When he catches it, it's a very quick three frame and it's right there in the zone. This is most likely a ball. If you look at where this ball is immediately before he catches it and where the hips are, this is the hip line right there. This ball is above it. This ball is probably at that letter line right there, but we get this call and we get to O2 and we come back with this nasty slider 
that starts just below the last cutter. Uh, let's go back to the last cutter. I'll show you where that one started so you can see. This cutter starts here and has this upward trajectory to it and ends up as a strike. We get that freeze. Next one is this slider. It starts off below that looking just like a strike uh, and then has this nasty movement and we get the sword. So got ahead with the first pitch uh, fastball. Actually, if you look at that uh, first pitch fastball real quick, let's scroll back to that and I'll show you something here. So this fastball comes off here on this line and it's a strike over here. Great. We get this freeze up cutter, great catch by Will Smith. And then we get this slider that starts off on that fastball line and you can see it just turn and go the other way. So another great example of tunneling and we get this sword. So what happens now? I just punched out the side and there, let's, let's just scroll back and see that real quick. Let's do, let's do a little slow motion because this is really where the tide turns. We got that little, little strut, little hand. Now, backstory, I know the Brewers hate that. I know Christian Yelich hates it. So I uh, just had to have a little fun with them because um, I was feeling myself. So next, what happens next? Sometimes you strut and you win. Sometimes this happens. Boom! and not what you wanna see as a pitcher. This look, if we can zoom in, ah, just a, just a tough moment. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You just gotta accept the results of that. I did mention that I like to square up the middle of the zone on a first pitch, and we can see where this one ends up, that I'll play the odds of throwing a pitch right here, first pitch, because uh, most often it's going to be an out, so long as I mix up which pitches I was throwing. Now, because it's spring training and I'm working on things, I was almost, I think I was exclusively fastball or cutter, first pitch of the at-bat up until this point, almost uh, pretty much to every hitter. I'm pretty sure to every hitter. Um, and probably got into a pattern. He goes up there having a better idea of what I'm going to do, and this is the result. So, so long as I mix up the speeds that I'm throwing at, I'm not worried about that, but I don't mind hitting this middle part of the plate on pitch one to get ahead. So that's the first homer, immediate karma. I strut and immediate homer. Now this at bat, I started off really well. So throw this first pitch cutter right here. We'll draw this trajectory line, release point up here and down. So this is our initial trajectory line, strike one. Now through another cutter because he didn't swing at the first one, trying to go right back in this area and we miss. So one, one. Come back with a fastball and get away with it. And again, I'm going to draw this same scenario. And if you've been paying attention to this video, you'll recognize this exact setup, which is what I recognized when I was on the mound. You have a cutter for a strike and a fastball middle. And so what do you do in this situation? It's almost the exact same situation when I drew my mound over here and my plate. Well, if you've been paying attention, you know that you throw this pitch that goes left and it's an almost guaranteed strikeout. So what do I do? I throw that pitch, but I miss. And I'm frustrated that I missed because I was just like, just get it there and he's out. But I front door him here. Um, I think if Will is set up in there and I'm trying to throw it, I'd probably get that strike call. Remember, he got me this one up here that was probably a ball and the umpire being inside. So the umpire is on this side of Will's shoulder. Whoops, don't move the strike zone right here. So the umpire's eyes are looking this way. So if you get a ball, so this is the corner of the strike zone right here. If you get a ball here and the umpire's eyes are over here, it's gonna make it look like it's over the plate. However, if the glove is set here and you have to see the catcher shift here first and then come back to it, you don't get that call very often. So I definitely missed. Will does a tremendous job actually. You can watch his body language here. Not his body language, but his movements. He recognizes this early. Watch the body shifts here. He's not just staying in the same spot and reaching the glove to catch this ball. The body is sliding, 
so that he beats the ball to the spot, and when he catches it, the glove is coming this direction. He's funneling this back into the strike zone. Now, we're not gonna get that call just because I missed my spot by so much, but he did a tremendous job of trying to adjust to that on the fly and get that call. We come back, try to get the slider right to the same spot again, and I missed again. Uh, I thought he swung at this. I mean, I think that's a swing. It looks like the barrel has broken the plane. I mean, from here, I can't tell from the other angle. Uh, I, thought, I thought this was technically a strike and I thought this was technically a swing. Don't get either call and I don't deserve either call because I missed so badly. So now we're in a three, two count. And I figure everything in this at bat has been up, 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 fastball up, cutter up. So if you've been paying attention, a nice little down shot fastball probably is a strikeout. Unfortunately, this one just leaks like middle elevation in where he swings at it. I think this anywhere out here and down is a strikeout looking, but this ball leaks back middle and gets absolutely crushed. And we can see again, ah, just not a good, not a good look. Look at that. Not what you want to see as a pitcher when you're breaking down your film post start, but that's what it was. So. That's what happens sometimes when you strut you win sometimes when you strut you lose and you just got to be okay with it and keep going because you're going to win more often than you're going to lose in my opinion anyway that's today's episode of breaking point i hope you learned something we had some really good discussions i thought about tunneling about hitter body language and some of the catcher cues also some behind the scenes information about what was going on in this game so if you like this video and you haven't subscribed already you've cheated you ignored the rules, you broke the rules, but I'll give you a second chance. Hit that subscribe button right now. And for the rest of you, I appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video.